My guest today is one, a young man I have known for a long time. But you know, I feel like his life is kind of sort of like mine. I feel like if you don't know me today and you only knew me 10 years ago, you don't really know me because God has done such a work. And I can say that about my guests. I've just seen this beautiful ministry flow out of he and his wife. And I'm just excited about what's happening. He's got a word for us today and it's going to shift. There, you get ready for a shift in your heart, a shift towards the Lord, a shift towards a face-to-face -face, uh, life with him. So I am ready to learn and gain from Philip Renner today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I just love you guys. You recognize the last name, the son of Denise and Rick Renner, and what a package that they instilled in you with the, the grace of God. Your well, great we're, we're combination family, of your family. Yes, you are. And we've been, our families have been covenant partners for a long yes, time. Yes, they have. So for us to sit here and to have a fresh word from the Lord, you really have been given something really fresh for the body of Christ, but I think really fresh for, um, you know, the group and the people that we've come up under and the uh, word of faith, we are so strong in the word, but I think there's some things that worship has opened the door to his presence in a way. And you have another thing, like sometimes this worship that we have leads into the discovery of keys to worship. And so I love the title of your book is A Fasted Life, Living a Lifestyle of Intimacy and Power with God. Well, that could go nearly anywhere. But when you say fasted, you mean like really... Fasted life. I mean, I mean, fasting. Fasting, fasting yeah. has become a very, very powerful tool in my life. And really, every major breakthrough or every major decision that I've ever made, mm -hmm. I can trace back to fasting, to where I cried out to God. And because you have this mindset that fasting is not just, I'm going to starve myself, but this is a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Lord, check the reins in my heart so that I'm on the right path and I'm going in the right direction. That's what David prayed. And that's really what fasting is. And when you fast, you starve your fear and you build up your faith. Mm. And that's why when you're fasting, it's a powerful, powerful place. But it's really, it's not just about a one-time fix when you fast, it's about a fasted life. And we don't have the time to pray five hours, six hours a day, but you can be constantly connected to God. Like a lot of people, they pray and they say, oh, I have my allotted time, my hour, my hour and a half in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. And that's wonderful. But it's really when you have a connection with God all through the day, when you're catching the wind of the Holy Ghost. You know, I, I was praying recently and the Lord told me, Philip, I need you to catch the wind. Mm. I need you to set your sails correctly so that you catch the wind. And when you're a skilled sailor, you set those sails correctly and now the wind blows and now you're going to go either around that storm or you're going to go through that wave because you're that much more powerful. And when you catch that wind, in one day, you can do more than you could do in an entire year because you caught the wave and you caught that you wind. You get in the flow with him and what he's doing and what you're doing in that flow is going to have a big impact. Amen. You know, that makes me think, um, Philip, about what Jesus said to Nicodemus, which I don't think we've understood the depth of what he said when he said, um, if you... That he said you must be born again, and some virgins are born of the Spirit. And he said, if you're, Jesus said, if you aren't born of the Spirit, you won't even see or perceive the kingdom of heaven. And then he talks about a leaf. It's like a, the Spirit is like a leaf. Like in other words, as you were saying, to catch the wind, in my mind I heard, be caught up in the wind. Yeah. Like, um, 
it makes all the difference in the world, especially right now, doesn't it? Because I think we just thought that meant being born again, you know, back when. But being born again, even now, born into something higher, I think he's calling us to. I, I think the entry of that has been some of the things that you've taught us about worship and the fasted life. Let me ask you a question. When you, when I think these things, fasting, uh, worship, prayer in the morning, they can easily turn into ritualistic religious things that you do. And sometimes we don't like to think of ourselves as being religious over in this group or that group, but this is not that. How, how do you, how do you fast? It's a, it's a life. It's a lot. It's an alive place in your life. How, how did you step into that? And What's God doing with that? I remember when I was a youth pastor and I had tried everything you could possibly do. And the result was out of the 30 youth that I had, 15 were gossiping against me. <laughs> they didn't want me to be the youth pastor anymore. They said, you can sing, so you can sing, but don't <laughs> preach because you're a horrible preacher. <laughs> That's what they said. Not great. <laughs> and I remember crying out to God like, Lord, what is going on? what is going on? And he said, well, you've done everything except fasting. Hmm. And I remember how when I first started fasting, I thought, oh, I'm fasting for a breakthrough. But then as I began to fast, the Lord would show me that you're not really fasting for my hand. You're fasting for my heart. Uh... You see, so many people, they they get into this place where I'm gonna fast for that job or I'm gonna fast for that breakthrough or I'm gonna fast for this revival, but they get so caught up in what they're fasting for that they miss God's heart. And then the breakthrough happens, but they still have the same problems, the same issues that they had before because they never fasted for God's heart. But here's the cool thing is when you fast for God's heart. And what I mean by that is it's okay to have a reason for fasting, but that can't be the primary reason for fasting because you're not going to get transformation. You're going to get a one-time fix, but you're not going to get transformation. And that's what God wants for us. Is he wants transformation in our hearts. And so when you fast, you're saying, okay, God, I'm going after your heart. But the cool thing is when you go after his heart, his hand comes your direction. Right. His blessing comes your direction. But then there's also instruction that comes your direction. And a lot of people, they fast and they hear the instruction, but they say, oh, I don't like that idea. <laughs> I'm not going to do Can't that. Kind of miss the point of fasting when you... <laughs> set aside what he's asking of your, or even sometimes when we say, I'm going on a fast and we pick the same old, same old things we always fast, we decide we need to fast bread and sugar because really we want to lose weight. Yeah. And that's the thing we think we need to get our mind off of, but we get our mind on that. Yeah. Because how do you, like, I, I did a, we did a fast recently and I was like, I'm fasting what he says. Halfway through, he said, okay, I want you to add this. I'm like, it really was a very fluid fast. Like, he wanted from me not the go-to things. He wanted me to fast what he asked me to do. So I didn't fast some of the things that people say, well, you have to fast sugar or you have to fast this. But it's really, do you just let him tell you what to fast? Or you fast it all? Oh, everything? I've, I've like fasted. There, I've water. fasted everything I've done through <laughs> all the fasts, the dry fast, the liquid fast, uh, Starbucks fast. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, is it I'm sometimes joking. it's just, but it's sometimes it's just simply like there's just one thing you just want you to lay down for a day or two days. That's still you know, the fast. Bible says that in John 10 verse five, it says that we are a sheep. We know his voice and a stranger we will not follow. And I think it's so important in these days that we have to follow his mm -hmm. voice 
and we have to follow his instruction. And I think what happens a lot of times is that people will fast, but they don't like the instruction. And then they say, God didn't speak to me, <laughs> but God <laughs> did speak to you. Exactly. You didn't like the instruction because the instruction uh, was a pruning. It's a pruning of the vine. It's, it's cutting away things. And we don't like to be cut away. We don't like the, the discipline and, and dying to ourself. But it's in the cutting away of things that God will begin to grow new things in you. And, and you'll have new life. And you'll break limitations. Fasting breaks down that part of yourself. Yeah. Like the part of us that wants to go to a Satanist convention with a bullhorn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yell from across the street at them. But then there's that's that's not what Jesus would do. That's not no. how he would approach it. And when we break the bread of our life before him and we fast what feeds us, we begin to be um I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to say. We begin to be bread for him yeah, an availability for him to be the bread to others instead of us handing off some sorry part of ourselves or our own pride in those situations. I don't know how we can keep, I don't know how we're going to go forward yeah. in the kingdom with where he's taken us without breaking off the chains of the past, the how to's of the past. Yeah. And fasting creates what? What does the intimacy describe that for us? Like how fasting creates this intimacy with the Lord that you found? Well, when I think about fasting, you know, Jesus, Jesus talks about wine and making wine and that there is a crushing. Mm -hmm. So that's that pruning that I'm talking about, but there is that crushing. And when that crushing happens with the grapes, there is wine that is produced, or there's olive oil that is produced. And the amazing thing, when you're producing that oil, when you're producing that anointing, sometimes it takes time. But we don't want to be crushed. <laughs> we don't want to be crushed, but Jesus was crushed on the cross, so know, we got it. Okay, that's a good place for fasting. I mean, is that not true? We it's don't true. want to be crushed. No. And we don't want to be, where does the fruit come from? The fruit of the vine comes from its being crushed inside yeah. of us. The fruit of him, placing it before him in that place of kind of crushing our own junk and our own things before him.